have uh, John Waliki is coming in at uh, 15. Ah, aha, here he is. Welcome. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mateo. That was fantastic. I'm really delighted to be here. Thank Ryan. you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, John. Have fun now. Well, well of course, yeah, always. So, <laughs> so, Ryan, I'm like a live demo guy all the time. And that's what you're going to see. Excellent. That Are sounds great. I, I was especially interested in your topic. I know there's a lot in there, but um, this sounded like a really fun uh, thing that I would maybe want to reproduce after the fact and, and try out as well. So I'm really excited. This sounded like a really fun topic. Um, yeah, abso so absolutely. I think um, we're just about ready to go. If you're ready, um, on, you want to- Hang on one second. What I'm going to do there. is- um, during our little talk, Ryan, I'm gonna since I can't see the live chat anymore because we're in the, the backstage. Um, I just sent you some some links. I was wondering if you could drop them into the chat for you our bet. audience if they want to yeah. follow along with some of our links here. Okay. Yeah, you bet, definitely. All right. Well, let's do it. All right. So we're gonna pray to the demo gods like uh Mateo suggested, and we are gonna roll here. Um let me do a quick introduction. And so my name is John Wallachie, and we're going to talk today about uh, containerizing and deploying your Node.js applications using some best practices. At the end, we're going to deploy our containers to IBM Cloud Code Engine, and I'll sort of take you that uh, through that as well. If you're uh, joining us just now, Ryan's been running the track today. We're in the JavaScript track. And, uh, Mateo and Lucas and, and I, and, and later after me, we've got uh, Ganesh coming up and just awesome presenters. I'm really humbled and delighted to be here uh, with them. We're gonna cover a couple of topics and um, just a little bit of background on why you're gonna wanna spend the next 30 minutes with me. I'm an IBM developer advocate, sort of a senior developer. I love to teach. I love to uh, speak at conferences and mentor at hackathons and run workshops and tutorials and now tons of live streams. Um, so this is sort of second nature. I'm eager to get out on the trade show floors and at the conferences. And next week, uh, hopefully I'll see some of you at Open Source Summit in Seattle. So look for me there in the IBM booth. Um, so that's what I do. And uh, so senior IBMer, I you know do a lot of different. So I'm an IoT guy, uh, no uh, and Node.js application developer forever and ever. Um, other roles in IBM, sort of really fun, leading the Linux efforts, and so great partnership with Red Hat uh, for two decades plus now. Um, but what we're going to spend the rest of our time talking about is how to build Node.js containers. And I'm going to spend a couple of minutes. My one slide, guys, I promised that there was going to be no slides. And I just got one because I just want to introduce the topics. Um, so what makes a good container? Where and why would you want to build containers that are uh, trusted and secure and small and production ready? Well, let's unpack those because they're really important. Um, First, number one, you want to start with a trusted base image. Um, you can go to Docker Hub and per peruse through all the containers that are out there and maybe pick one that you want to build on top of. But let's be honest, Ivan from Moscow doesn't have your best interests in mind. Okay, so maybe you shouldn't select his image as, as your base. What you want to do is select an image, a base image, that has got a pedigree and is supported and has got a, a it's being scanned and actively maintained sort of that the you want to build from recent images that are you know got all the CVs applied that have the right set of infrastructure and and rigor underneath them so we're all very passionate and very worried now about our software supply chains and the software bill of materials and starting from a trusted image really gives you that security that you know you're going to uh, really require especially as you get to production you want to know what your application is running on top of and and so number one let's start with a trusted base image and i'm going to introduce you to uh, what's called universal base images so from Red Hat. 
Um, they're free, and, and I've been building with them for now a couple of, you know, two years, um, starting to get good at it, though I rarely call myself an expert. Um, number two, secure. So you can throw a kitchen sink into a container and call it done. It works, but it's got an entire vast attack surface. And a secure container is going to be really tight, um, sort of that uh, you understand and you know exactly why every package is in your container. Anything more is, is a vulnerability waiting to happen. So just what oh, I always think of is how do I make this, this container as tight and small, I'm gonna install only what I need for the particular workload. And, and then nothing else because you want to make sure that, uh, well, because, you know, CVEs are going to happen, right? Versions are going to happen. And it's software, and we're all sort of building on top of other shoulders, other giants, and you know, we make mistakes. So the smallest attack surface possible is going to make your container, um, uh, hopefully, as you get to production, uh, that much more secure. Now, as you as you start to prune and um, really collate your image, you, you obviously it's going to get smaller. And maybe it gets big, and then it gets smaller over time. I very often developers will collaborate, and they they'll give me an enormous uh, in, uh, Docker file, and we'll prune it down, and we'll get it smaller and smaller. And I'm going to show you how we can do that in the next couple of minutes. We're gonna start with a pretty big container and then a, a little bit smaller container and then like as small as we can get it for the particular workload. Um, and then we wanna make sure we're production ready. When we go pick on our image, do we need all the docs? Do we need all of the extras that are sort of delivered inside of our image? No, right? What we really want is the, the production harness, the test infrastructure, and, and you'll see me um, in the next couple of minutes, I build almost everything from a make file, local, and then GitHub Actions, and then you know a variety of uh, Tekton pipelines and so forth as we get to uh, production-ready uh, OpenShift clusters and, and Kubernetes clusters. So we want to make sure that we can push our containers through the pipeline and we get consistent results out of right. We want repeatable results. We don't want, oh, I, today it looked like it worked and then tomorrow it doesn't quite work because we you know, chose poorly. Um, so we want to think through how we get to production ready pipelines. And uh, so I built, I write make files and then I write, you know, GitHub actions and I write Tekton pipelines and I, you know, pay attention to those things. So those are sort of the, the four big lessons, the four big takeaways uh, for John. All right. Um, Let's go and and so I'm not the only one that's thinking about this. And uh, I've one of my uh, ex IBM colleagues and now a Red Hatter uh, excited for him. And he's he's leading the Node application to stack. Uh, you know, he's actually part of the Open JS as well. Um, he sits as a community member on the Open JS uh, technical committee. Uh, but uh, Michael Dawson and Michael wrote a blog post about a, a month ago and really inspired me to come and talk. Ryan uh, today because I he he wrote the blog and I'm like oh I do all those things and I learned a couple of new ones from from Michael as along the way and so so as I read through this post and if you're able to drop that link this link into the chat that would be great Ryan thank you so much for uh, for being my my uh, right hand man got it you bet thanks thanks all right so I'm gonna we're focusing in here on part five right how to build a good container. And uh, so what makes a good container? And, and so I'm echoing the same things, right? Best practices, security, and size, and, and pitfalls, and how you get your images to production. And, and this, he starts to talk about why you should start with a base image that is trusted. And, and because they're supported by the Red Hat team, um, so the Red Hat universal base images is a perfect place to uh, to really uh, get started and the second thing right so you want to don't run as don't run your containers as root um 
kind of avoid the privileged ports and and really think through the security of your container only put the the bits that you need don't put secrets into your container and what you'll often what i've been doing is i inject um environment variables into my containers so i build a container it's it's all everything that uh whether it's python or or node i'll just use environment variables and either through kubernetes secrets or environment variables from uh your your runtime, you want to inject them. All right, so so that way, I could put my and I sometimes I do half the time I'll put my containers up on Docker Hub. Sometimes I put them into private registry services like the IBM Container Registry or Quay. Um, I don't put secrets into my containers because someone drive by, go to Docker Hub, it's public. They pull down my container, they run it, they they run, you know, bash into it. And they're like, oh, look, there's John's secrets. And so I have avoided that um, very careful to not leak my secrets anywhere in a public container. And so I'm going to use uh, environment variables uh, throughout. Now, it's a little bit more work. I know it's a pain, but it's the right thing to do. And the last thing is you want someone to go hack the, your back end because they've got a, a secret. Okay. Um, and then he talks about complicated stories. And I'm going to actually do the same thing but my own little words and not in michael's because if i were to just pick hello world we all hello world is so easy it's not going to show us the differences so i'm going to pick a, a little bit harder scenario um in, in my little example in the next 25 minutes um i do want to do one more shout out to uh bobby wolf because he he also wrote a really good blog post let's see if we can get that link into the chat as well uh best practices for designing universal application images and and bobby's one of my colleagues here at ibm and posted this on the ibm developer website and uh he is, he's an open shift uh, expert and so he's you know obviously in the trenches with our clients and customers uh, deploying their images and so you know he's got lots of practical experience about building trusted secure images keep them tight keep them small and so he's got a great set of lessons here uh that that you can uh you can also learn from right ubi image management um security updates two-stage builds i've i'm going to show you the difference between a two-stage build and a one-stage build and you'll be shocked about you know what how much you can squeeze out of a container now why would it matter why why is it important to build small containers well a small container is going to let you especially in serverless environments or in a kubernetes cluster where it's sort of transient or k-native it's going to pull an image and then execute that image well you want the cold starts to be as fast as possible. And if the cold start needs to pull a gig and a half or two gig or five gig of, of cruft out of a container registry service, that's a your cold starts are gonna be really long. And so the smaller your image, the faster the cold starts are gonna be. All right, so think about finding the right way to squeeze your images, especially um, as, we, as we start to look at the the bases okay now i've been talking about ubi actually do i have this link here i wanted to talk about what a ubi image is <clears throat> another blog post here so announced uh two years ago at red hat summit um and the idea was they're free they're built on top of red hat rel 8 uh, they also have rel 7 images as well so ubi 7 and ubi 8 and then they started to spin custom builds of it. So we're gonna focus in on the Node.js because this is a Node track and a JavaScript track, but there's a set of Java uh, base images and, and they really start tight and they're they're all well-maintained. They're every week they're coming out with, you know, whatever CVEs and someone's watching and someone is paying attention to that. So a brilliant place to get started as opposed to the wild west that you can go up to Docker Hub um, and you know, good luck with that. Now, some custom companies post official images. That's a good, great place to start as well. Custom, you know, an official image from one of the upstream projects, great way to uh to sort of understand the pedigree of your of your base images. 
but be careful about what that official image is it truly you know how much support is is behind it all right so a great link there now where to find the ubi images so jump up to uh, catalog.redhat.com software containers explore and then i did a search and uh because i'm looking for uh, node.js 14 sort of the the you know the latest uh lte release and i found two of them um and so we're gonna take a look so this one is sort of the build and run an application and then minimal is sort of the strip it down a little bit and I'll tell you some stories, Ryan, because I, there's often scenarios where I have a two-stage build that begins with this one, and then for my production run image, I move I move what I just built here over to the minimal, and that's going to be part of my story, because in this case, I might need, you know, the if I'm especially if I've got native binaries. So node lets you build native binaries. So I might need to do a GCC compile and, and with all of the kitchen sink that it requires uh, to do the tool chain build, the build tool chains. But I only need the resulting, you know, shared library. And so I'm going to copy that shared library and all of the whatever build artifacts from, from uh, node modules over to the minimal image. And that's when uh, we're going to see the size dramatically shrink and my attack surface is smaller and I don't have all this junk in my junk required for the build, but unnecessary for production runs. So these two become my friend. Um, there's actually a micro. Oh, here. So I, I jumped up. And I've done, been doing this now for, you know, months and months. And I noticed that just a day ago, uh, they came out with the latest tag. So I've been a month ago. I, you see, the image that I'm running is built on 1.23. And last yesterday, last night, I said, oh, I'm going to do this talk and want to make sure that I'm running the latest, but I'm not. Okay. So I figured I'll hold off and I'll do it live with you because we're going to upgrade our image from, from 23 to 26 uh, just, to, just to do it live. Um, and just be careful when you, if you're doing a Docker, you know, uh, build from, and then you just say latest, not always sure what you're going to get. And I'm going to show you that why latest is not what you sometimes think you're going to get. Latest does not mean 1.26 if you already have latest on your in your cache. It doesn't do a check. And so I got tripped up on this. I, I kept uploading my my image, and it there would be a scan up in the cloud, and it said, you know, you've got security vulnerabilities. And I'm like, I'm running latest. I was running latest from you know like way back here, because it was still cached on my laptop where I was doing my builds. And so what I've done is I've moved to tagging my images explicitly, because now it's a repeatable. I know exactly what's in that container, not latest yesterday, latest today, right? That's not a repeatable process. When I say latest, I really want is, I know my production image is 1.23 and how am I exposed? Because now I can go and look at the security for the newest one and I can go and take a look at the security packages and what's different. So I jump over to packages and upgrades and I can say, oh, these six packages have some CVE related to them. And I, I know the security exposure because, look, we all get asked by our boss, does this affect what, us, right? Does it affect our image? Does it affect our production? And I can say, well, we're running 1.23, 1.26 is available. And let's go take a look at the CVEs that that are particularly, and then of course, do push the, the latest builds through our pipeline and, and move to production uh, upgrades. All right, so we're gonna actually do this live. Um, and, and then my last little image here. So in addition to sort of telling you about Node.js minimal UBI image, so, so very quick, you know, grab that with the right tag. Um, there is 
a even smaller one, which is a little bit more work. If you, but if you're a Fedora or Red Hat user, um, it's actually not too bad. So what they did with Micro UBI Micro is they pulled out all of the package maintenance tool chains. So you actually run the DNF install. So these are or the app get install from your from your laptop and you just push the results into your uh, mounted container image. And uh, so so it actually is sort of like the do, uh, distro list container. Think of it that way. So the distro list containers. Um, so that's UBI micro and you'll see some dramatic uh, shrinkage here as well. All right, so let's stop out of my browser and let's just jump over to um, a couple of little terminals here. Um, I sort of, I'm going to do some edits of to make files, the darker files in a second, but I wanted to show you. So I, I built this a couple of different ways and I'm building a pretty big project. I decided not to take Hello World. Um, the project we're going to build, let me just show you at the end. It's always good to see what we're trying to build here. So part of IBM, I was sort of a weather nerd and I've got access. I went and talked to my weather colleagues and I'm like, give me an API key because I want to go build my own weather maps. And, you know, I've got a weather station on my roof. And uh, so what I can do is I can go and find out what the weather is. So I took a, a base map and a weather, the weather radar, and I sort of do the little, um, you know, current conditions and, you know, heat and the wind. So I can sort of look at um, and I, so this is what we're going to create. We're building a, a node application that's going to go and, and pull different tiles from the weather company and overlay it into a, uh, into a map. All right. So that's sort of the end result that we're going to get to. And, uh, so that's the node red TWC weather radar map. And I built it three different ways. So the first one, remember I told you about multi-stage. Well, I, I built it with just one stage. So the and because Node Red requires bcrypt, which is a native module, it needs the compilers, the GCC compiler. And uh, so when you build that one, it's you know 600 meg, 687 meg there. Um, then I said, well, I want to go build it using the uh, UBI eight as my first stage, and then I'm going to use UBI minimal as my uh, oh actually here then I actually the second one I built was the two stage so this is now a two stage one but I stripped out the compilers and it shrank by you know 200 and something meg 275 meg that's a pretty big difference between just doing a two stage even with UBI and then my last step was to do the the build and compile in UBI eight, and then copy the results into UBI minimal, and you can see I dropped another, you know, another seventy five meg. So, so uh, let's do the math, uh, sixty five meg. So so I've you know in very quick amount of that little little bit of complexity in a Docker file, but big results um, that that make a big difference. Um, and then remember, I talked about micro here. Uh, look how small the micro images are. And uh, so that's sort of clever as well, because, uh, you know, this is the type of thing that you really want to head towards. OK, so ah, this was the other thing I wanted to point out. Remember, I had cached uh, the UBI 8 Node.js 14 minimal. And I had said, you know, do a Docker poll on latest about four months ago. And I got an image and it's still in my cache. That's not the newest, right? The newest is was up until yesterday, 1.23 and today 1.26. So um, be careful when you when you pull your tags because this is not always what you get. All right, let's go to a make file and to a Docker file. Um, Let's let's sort of walk through it. And I'll I'll tell you a little story. So I, because I'm the slowest typer, uh, and I fat finger everything. I do create make files so that way I could just do make build, make 
you know, make whatever, make run, make test, make push, and, and so forth. So I've got, um, I'm going to push both to Docker Hub and to the IBM Container Registry Service. Um, and I've got a little namespace there for, for Dev Nation. I gave my container a name. I gave my container a version. Oh, I'm doing multi-arch builds too, because behind you, remember an IoT guy? That's my real job. Um, behind me, I've got my Raspberry Pi, and under the desk, I've got my Jetson Nano ARM64. And and uh, so in the Raspberry Pis here, I've got some Raspberry Pi OS, 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS, 64-bit. Uh, I've got a Fedora 34 um, IoT and a Fedora 35, oh, sorry, Fedora 32 image. So I sort of mix my little cluster there where I start to, you know, experiment with different types of, of uh, uh, different architectures because we know we're deploying out to product, out to our clients in IoT and IIoT uh, scenarios. All right. Um, so we'll, we could also recompile our little Node.js app with uh, ARM64. I'll show you that too. If I've got time, Ryan's gonna have to give me the hook, I think. All right, so set up my credentials. Here I got, I've got one that, so my I'm a Fedora user that hasn't figured out there. Um, so I'm gonna run Podman I, and I'm sort of muscle memory between Docker as a CLI and Podman as a CLI and build a, as a CLI. So you'll see me, you know, sort of fat finger between all of them. But what we want to do is we're going to just build, the first one's going to be just a one stage. Can we can we build from one stage and we're going to pull in, a, I'll make this bigger so you all see, and we're going to pull in from a Docker file uh, called uh, Docker file UBI8 one stage, and uh, we're going to do a build, okay? And then we're going to try again with, with a two stage, but just UBI eight, and then we're going to do a minimal, which starts with um, UBI eight, and then copies into. So it's, we're going to run a couple of these, and they do take a couple of minutes. Oh, let's actually jump over to these as well, because um, there's really some important tips here. So from registry access, Red Hat com UBI eight tag the version eight point four most recent production. Um, I do a. Uh, so of course now I've, I'm starting from a base image here and I want to install the Node.js bundle. And I know that my particular workload here requires uh, uh, a set of node, uh, node builds that are going to need Python. So I have to pull in Python. But you'll notice that I, I say don't install all the weak dependencies. So false on the weak dependencies because you wind up getting extra cruft into your base images that you don't need. So, so just turn it off that I don't want the recommended stuff that you might uh, give to me. Um, the next thing I do is there's a whole bunch of silly warnings that it's not a, you know, I don't have a license for rel eight cause I'm a Fedora uh, workstation person. So I just disable that plugin so I can avoid some of the alerts and warnings. And I, I do the same thing. So you'll see me pull in GCC and shadow utils, et cetera, et cetera. I got to throw um, one more, one minute warning in here. Yeah, while you're, cool. while you're on the topic of warnings. To, <laughs> so Ryan's telling me that I've got just a minute here. And so we'll kick off a build and then uh, we won't see it. Now, the last thing we're going to do, uh, and so that's the one pass image. The next one, I'm going to show you how I do it here. Start with the base. Um, and then copy from my, in my release image, I'm just going to do a copy of the results there. And I'm going to get, you know, a much tighter, a much smaller image. I mean, at the end of the day, I deploy, do a, a make code engine. And I actually, well, I've logged in to here. It's actually logged me out. Um, but this one, so there's that app running up on IBM code engine in five minutes or so, I was able to uh, to push my container up and run it in IBM cloud uh, without too much trouble. All right, so I hope you learned a few things. I wish I was able to give you some demos and the compiles that the Docker image builds do take a 
you know, 10 minutes or so. So we'll, we'll take a pass on that this time. Hope you learned a few things about uh, how to build good containers. Do follow me on Twitter uh, at John Wallachy. Um, I tweet about Linux and open source and IBM cloud, uh, Node.js, Node.red, IoT. Come follow me. That was awesome. Thanks, John. I have one quick question for you. Since you're running a lot of this on Raspberry Pi, was there any major difficulty in, like, those are ARM images instead, right? Do most of them work for the, the common yeah. uh, image yeah, types? They, they do, Ryan. So so let's, so what I'm going to show you here, um, I just did a, when you do a multi, so I use Builder to do multi-arch quite often. Um, and let me just show you in my make file. So it, in my build a command, there, there are base images. Oh, nice. UBI base images for multiple architectures. So ARM, ARM64, PowerPC, System 390, which is the Z mainframe. Um, I don't know if any others are supported. Cool. So, so you wind up building you do a build a manifest create and you're going to give it a you're going to override the architecture uh, um, and so that those the the build a build from docker um so that's the magic command right there okay um cool. and the other one is like you could actually so within the arm world there's multiple variants so you could do variant v v8 that's arm 64 if you do it a variant v7 that's arm 32 and awesome. uh, so you can target different raspberry pi images that's great cool well thank you for this uh fully live uh introduction um to minimizing containers and and covering all these best practices this is a really great topic uh excellent content thank you so much great Oh, and follow if you if the audience wants to continue to chat. Let's jump over to the Slack channel, and I'll be happy to continue on. Or if you're in Slack, just jump over. Either meet me in general, or meet me in you know. Well, general is probably the best place. We'll start a thread there. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see if you have any uh, repo links to those uh, build scripts. I'd love to take a look afterwards. Oh, I I do, I do, of course, Ryan. <laughs> I'll put it in the chat for everyone. Excellent. Thank you very okay. much.